All right, welcome back, YouTube, uh, to another episode. And in this episode, this is going to be a quick <clears throat> intermediate one where we just go over a really cool feature of gun physics uh, in the world. So just like whenever we have a gun in the world, currently, I, I raised it up. It was on the floor, but I uh, we've got this gun in the world. And if we just hit play, it doesn't drop. Um, it just stays floating. And obviously, that's fine. We can still pick it up. That's fine. But, um, you know, if you if you want gun physics and this is something that you want enabled, and of course you don't absolutely you absolutely can skip over this, and this is not going to affect anything major. Um, it shouldn't. Uh, some things might look a little different, um, but uh, nothing major, of course, because this is just a aesthetic thing. And uh, one quick bug fix as well. So, um, this is a fix uh, that is a result of the last episode. So if anyone runs into this issue, I'll reference this. So um, in, a, in your FPS HUD, if you go to, uh, let's see, Content, Blueprints, UI, and uh, FPS HUD, I had a, um, we obviously changed our equip weapon last time, and the way that, that uh, item was called, it's the object mester now, not just the weapon. So in the FPS HUD, we can't just call it directly like that let's uh we got a cast to weapon master just create a pure cast and connect it like that and you should be good to go there if any of you were getting that error um and mainly for those of you who've been following this tutorial series all the way so moving on uh let's go to our weapon master and we're just gonna mainly do i believe everything in in here so <clears throat> first thing that we're going to want to do is uh, let's get a tick here. I did rage. <laughs> let's get tick. And then uh, let's get a sequence because you just never know how many things you're going to want to branch off in the future. And speaking of branch, we are going to want to do a branch right after then zero. And uh, what we're going to do off of this is align trace by channel. And the start is going to be our actual location. And then our end is going to be uh, our actual location minus, uh, um, actually, sorry, 10 in the Z direction. So we're basically, with this, <clears throat> what this is doing is uh, a line trace by channel, which is just a simple uh, cast to get collision or whatever, or obviously whatever we want to do with this hit. And we're just getting it 10 units down in the in the negative Z direction from the actor. Uh, and what this will do is this will just detect something super close to us, and obviously that will be the floor, the ground, or, or any surface that it wants to consider resting. But it's going to do this from like essentially the center, wherever the center point of, of the gun is so if we click on it like it's gonna be casting down from the center of <clears throat> the actor as a whole if that makes sense not from here or from anywhere it's gonna be casting that uh, 10 units down from there so whenever it, let's go back to our event graph whenever it does do that well first of all we need to get what this branch is and this branch is gonna be test physics so let's uh, promote to variable and test physics. So the variable that pops up, obviously, uh, is just a bool there. Um, and we're not going to do anything on the false. So now we want to break the hit. And uh, branch off of it if it's a blocking hit. And if it's not, we can set simulate physics of the skeletal mesh to true. But if it is, we need to set test physics to false because uh, we uh, <clears throat> we don't need to be testing for it now that it's rested on something. We will have a way to turn test physics back on, of course, mainly when we've dropped it or... Uh, 
I would like to, and I haven't done it yet, but I'd like to also figure out a way if like it somehow whatever it's resting on moves or gets destroyed, it still needs to not be floating there. And currently the way uh, this logic works, technically it would not know if something from underneath it moved. So it would technically still float there. But we will have it test for physics again if we drop the weapon. Anyways, bit of a rant uh, or uh, tangent. So let's set simulate physics to false on the after the test physics here. And then you can basically, if you want, just print a little string saying gun physics off just so you know and then uh, that that should be that there so now let's set up the settings for the skeleton mesh what we're going to want to do is scroll down here and uh, check simulate physics to be true and then this doesn't want to scroll. Then the only thing that we don't want this colliding with is ourselves. Technically, even though everything's working just fine, it's just uh, uh, be easier so that way we don't kick it around and stuff. Because trust me, kicking around the gun gets glitchy, and I feel like there's a better way to do it. Because I would love to have that, even though it's just stupid, stupid and silly. Um, some people might want that, and I know I definitely kind of just want that. Like I kind of like walk up to the gun and just automatically like kick it, right? Um, not like physically like the no foot animation plays, but I just want the physics to collide and interact. And currently just the way it defaultly handles, it's really glitchy and messy and I don't suggest it. I want to come up with a much more confident way of, of, of just like making it bump away from the player whenever he comes, like walks right over it essentially. But moving on from that, I think everything else is accurate here. <clears throat> well, I feel kind of silly because I forgot to actually change the collision enabled um, to collision enabled. <laughs> it was on query only, so it wasn't actually handling physics, just uh, collision. So now, uh, let's see. Keeps wanting to pop up on the other screen. Hold on. Now it goes through the floor, which is fine. Okay. So I realized the reason it wasn't colliding with the floor either is because the floor is just set to, uh, it was set to default, but needs to be set to block all dynamic, uh, or uh, just block all. Um, for some reason, object isn't being set to block all, so object's the issue, so I guess just set it to custom if you're running into what I'm running into, and go to block all, but should be able to go into settings, project settings, collision, preset and then block all edit and tell block all to block objects as well except and honestly you could do that to block all dynamic as well but yeah I just edit block all to also include object okay now there we go man and the physics are off so we're walking over it nothing's happening and it's not extraneously simulating <coughs> physics or testing for that simulation. And then, of course, we can still walk up on it and pick it up. Uh... Alrighty, so quick recap of what happened. I was basically trying to simulate the physics and uh, pick it up. Um, after many testing and many results, like uh, I could pick it up and get the get the mark with this red square which is letting us know that the line trace is connecting I would get this if it was upright like this but if I could get it to fall over on spawn like this I would not get the red square when when looking at it I wouldn't I wouldn't get the line trace and I wouldn't get the string that we can pick it up so I was going all over checking collisions and and and, and making sure everything was right I'm going to go over some other things just to make sure that you guys uh, have these things correct as well. But uh, it, it was actually kind of stupid, and I don't really know why it, it happened like this. But basically, basically, uh, on our uh, on our player, right? Let's let's head over to our player, and uh, we have this aim object FPP that we were using 
for our, our line trace. So um, if we go to our event graph, right, we've got our big event graph here, and then we zoom in to the tick where we have the object pickup check. This node, right? So it, we've got the line trace for objects that's getting from the first person cam, and we did have this going to our aim object FPP, and this is the one that's like way, way far out out in the world for, for aiming and stuff, right? Well, what you need to do is make a new empty object. So since this one's already empty, has no model, you can just duplicate this one and make it a child of the FPP cam. And I just changed it to look at location because that's what I have it called on my other one. You can call it something else. Um, but you can see it's not very, it's just outside of the range of the sphere. So it's guaranteed to, no matter where we look at, it'll be within the range of our pickup radius. And that's kind of basically a good rule of thumb. Just outside of your pickup radius is kind of good boundaries. But apparently this one was too far of a line trace. Like the line trace would still happen, but I guess it was so much that it was just like not uh, doing it once the physics had like further simulated past just setting a little bit. I, I really don't know why, but basically... Um, I had to match exactly like my other project where I have like a much shorter line trace. So now if we go back to the object pickup, I just changed the item or the aim object FPP get world location to be the look at lo uh, locations because that's just a lot closer. But this is just the code as a reminder yeah, that uh, that allows the line trace to, to look to pick up the gun or look at the gun that we want to pick up. So that's that was the solution that I had for that but other than that uh, basically um, I I did just add some print strings for gun physics on off uh, you don't have to keep that I'm not gonna um, other than that everything should be just about the same uh, I've got uh, you you don't have to have simulate physics on on the gun because obviously the code will turn that on pretty much immediately as long as you have it floating um, and then, yeah, other than that, pawn is ignored, uh, collisions enabled, all that fun stuff. And then, uh, same over here, like no, no collisions were really changed on this end of things. So, um, other than that, yeah, if we just go back into a world, it drops and falls, and then we can look at it no matter where it's at. And uh, if you turn on the pawn collision, I'll just show you here, you can turn on overlap or block. And this will allow us to kick it around. So you can, you can kick it around, and you can definitely. But if you if you like sprint at it, sometimes it'll 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 freak out. You never know. But sometimes it behaves just fine. No matter where it's at, you can just pick it up and get right to shooting. So basically, that's all we'll have for the physics right now. And sorry, this was a bit of a weird tutorial with bad cuts and whatnot. Just you never know what little bugs and things that you're going to miss are going to pop up when you're programming. So just kind of the nature of the game and always always getting better and always learning how to debug is is definitely a skill that um, you, you, <laughs> you have to you have to know, really. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you liked, please like, leave a comment for any questions or join the Discord channel. You can talk to me and other other people who are programming and doing many other things in there. So, yeah. Uh, See you in the next one.